Welcome back to our live coverage of AWS Developer Day. We're live again. Welcome. Okay. Hey. 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 Wait, who, who? What, who's, who are we talking to? I don't even. If you're just joining us, welcome. We're talking all things developer, all things AWS, all things that you want to talk about because you can talk to us. Which is pretty incredible. And please do. Yeah, please. I'm desperate for your attention, just so you know. I'm A.M. Grabelny, speaking of uh, desperate for your attention, uh, always. You know, low self-esteem. Please uh, praise in the chat. That's that's all I ask. I'm Farah. I'm less needy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. She's more emotionally stable, which that's why they pair us together. Uh, uh, speaking of a famous pair, we oh. got a very famous pair down at the end of this table. Uh, who goes first? The younger uh, one. The younger one. Okay. The young oh. Thank you. Son, get Dude. off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, I'm uh, Kubis Bernard, and basically both tech and knowledge and not rust, body, stub done, uh, body yeah. double yeah. for Darko. We, we can also f fusion touch. Come on, Kubis. <gasps> oh, my oh. God, you're too old for this. Hi, friends. <laughs> uh, my name is Darko. I'm exactly the same as Kubis, a developer advocate. Uh, Kubis and I get to talk to you developers about all things code, all things AWS, and uh, I am incredibly humbled to be here with the most amazing Farah and and the meridian um so Ooh. thank you <laughs> thank you thank you for having us anti-matter is what oh. am stands for anti-meridian anti oh, ma oh anti-matter anti-matter yeah. are you allowed to be on it's pm, it's PM. Yeah. oh wow never heard that <laughs> one no. that one's completely sure. new sure. uh what i was gonna ask uh first question for you two is uh, out of the two of you which one is the stunt double yes Yes. Uh, both. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Exactly. Okay. We all, Good. you know, we all kind of like they, they say a joke. You know, what happens if Darko gets hit by a bus? Well, you have Kobus and vice versa as well. So. I see. Well, he's gonna need to get some tattoos. Then. Got, yeah. We. Well, you know, he has emergency tattoos. If, I, if I'm not around, <laughs> so <laughs> we put emergency tattoos on him. Um, but yeah. Um, thank you so much for having us, Chat. I wanna wanna thank you for being here. Please do f's in the chat for am. Uh, and thank you for being part of this. Do drop the questions if you have some for us. We'd love to answer answer a bunch of them for you. What we are gonna be talking about today is you've seen a lot of a lot of ways you can use large language models, chat chat applications, generative AI tools to build stuff and how to convert or what's the word is a convert how to upgrade your dotnet code and how to build stuff and how to do all those things today this bald man and i are going to be talking to you about how to learn and how to improve your skill how to become a better developer how to do what's best for you in your career with, and your team and your team wait, of course of wait, course the team yes wait why yes what? Yes. <laughs> so we're going to be talking a little bit about that um we're going to show showcase some some of the best practices we learned over the years because here's the thing um you may think we know everything, but we don't. Um, we, we just fake it very well. But also, we learn as we go along. So a lot of the stuff we learned over the last couple of years, we used large language models, we used chat chat, chat applications, we used coding assistants to help us kind of get there. And uh, we have um, three tips um, and some some examples on how, how to get you there. Would you say they're Q-tips? They're Q-tips. Oh, my gosh. No. That was good. That All was right. kind of funny. I like it. <laughs> okay. No, I don't. Uh, so we're going to have to ask you. Oh, okay. So sorry. Get your You've been voted Get your off. Uh, we took a vote. I'm the only one that voted because I'm the only one who knew that we were voting. Uh, and Kobus. Yep. Yeah. Get off we're island. See you go. Uh, yeah. No, you're not. But we enjoyed the time with you. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I, I liked your approach here with this segment, uh, trying to get us back on on the rails. Uh, Darko did earlier, and we took you back off, Darko. But uh, I I have not heard of a lot of approaches to how to use these new tools as learning yeah. capabilities, right? We've heard a bit from Brian as we've talked through the developer challenges, but but I think you two have focused solely on, like, how does this improve my uh, capabilities yeah. as a developer in terms of my knowledge, yeah. not just my productivity, right? Yeah, and I think, I think the key thing here is, like, we talk a lot about how you do stuff. How do you do? How do you code? How do you produce? How do you create, generate content? How do you produce value? But... Um, we don't say about the how do you how. I'm sorry. That's a whole, <laughs> how do you learn to do those how do things? You how? how do you how? Yes. And then, um, <laughs> but there's but there's an untapped um, a depth of content within large language models that can teach you how to become better developers. You can pick a language that you prefer or you want to learn. You can pick a framework. You can 
pick a cloud vendor um, and you can you can use LLMs to kind of get you up to speed to know what exactly you want to do. So, Kovas, maybe a couple of examples of how did you learn those so, because I know you were doing Ooh, a couple of learning yes. stuff. So, what would you suggest to our chat? Oh, okay. So, context here, I had to build a, uh, a front end and I'm not a front end developer. Give me APIs and backends all day long. Um, last thing I built was with Jay Goodies with Java in 2010, I think. So, yeah been a while so i decided i want to use react and i know nothing so i just basically started hitting up the LLMs and have the conversation like okay what's the project outline okay. plonk it in i want to use this framework and this library plonk it in and then basically not just blindly copy pasting except for the beginning because i had no clue and then you kind of figure out oh okay this is the kind of thing but then i think the big thing for me is when you start explaining what you want in terms of the end result and with prior programming knowledge, you start going like, "Isn't there a better way to do this? Like, why do I keep copying and pasting this one block?" Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I, I think I think there's a, there's a very important reason why you want to learn. Why don't you just want to drop the code inside of a repo? Why don't you just want to drop have everything magically create code for you? Um, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna share uh, a thing on my screen right now. So I'm gonna show you, and we're gonna drop the link in the chat as well. So this is from our colleague, colleague Massimo. It's the tentative framework for generative AI assistant adoption today. Uh, uh, that's, like my, that's, like, that's like my favorite part is like today because we know it might be changing tomorrow. You know, it's also tentative. This is very non-committal. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's, it's incredibly already... non-committal today Sh and tentative. Yeah. like it could change at any moment. And for any reason. Yeah, he's, sure. a, he's a realist. I'm like, Massimo's really. He's, yeah. he's great. I love it. Shout out to Massimo. Uh, but it is, it is very important here because, like, you see this big old green circle. Now, I'm not going to explain this whole thing. There's a blog post we're going to link. You can read down below. But um, this green circle pre pre uh, presents the, the safe zone, the, the learning zone. This is where you are in full in control. What I'm trying to say here, if you ask a large language model, a coding assistant, an ag agentic workflow to create the world for you, you're gonna get lost really, really fast. You're gonna start. It's gonna start producing code that you have no idea what that is, and you may trust it. It may be good, but it may not be good. <laughs> or, or it's less hallucinating. Or exactly, I, yeah. And you have no, you have no knowledge to know if that's good or bad. On the other side, if you ask it to just create random variables, you're just not using it properly. So if, by by learning more, you will start to move this circle, the safe zone, more towards the more complex things. And you need to invest time in that, right? Um, your skill needs to grow as the your utilization of large language models, uh, which are investments, also grows. So it is critical for you to to adapt, overcome, and advance. I don't know how that survive. Survive, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, oh, well. Not in it like the dinosaurs. Oh, well, yeah. I was about to say, like, we're yeah. gearing up here. Yeah. 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 I mean, like, you know, so. Strange event. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, can, can I ask you, Darko, this is an unplanned question. I'll just it. drop you uh, this question. You, you talked about picking a language, a framework, these things, right? Like, those are pretty early on in a, in a developer's mm. journey, right? Mm -hmm. Like, picking your first language. And that's kind of a big deal it like if crazy. i remember back because i came to tech later in life uh i was not on the traditional path that a lot of people take uh, and picking a language was one of the most difficult things i started with actually in your journey <laughs> right that you've taken with learning with these tools uh did you consider that at all like can i use these tools to help me pick a language can i use these tools to help me pick a framework to learn for the first time Yes, exactly. You have to be very careful when asking a, a, a coding assistant to give you a recommendation. You want to yeah. give it. You want to ask it to give you a recommendation with a completely blank slate. Don't come and say, "Oh, I like Python. I think Ruby is cool, and I think Haskell is beautiful." And then it's going to give you one of those three examples. Right? right. Tell it in a in a in a broad sense. I don't have any skills. What's the best language? What's the objectively oh. the best <laughs> language? Wait, wait. In the world? favorite wait, question. Wait for it. It is, of course. Rust. R Haskell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Chat. Um, yeah. Chat. What is objectively the best language? Exactly. Drop that well, in chat right now, please. But, but like, just choice of language is also very important. And, and, and a tool, uh, generative assistance can actually help you by not just telling you, oh, just use Python. But you should ask, so, okay, why Python? And it's going to be able to break down a couple of reasons. Why should you actually be using Python? And then you can make a decision for yourself. Oh, absolutely, I'm going to go ahead and use Python, right? You may not want to adopt Perl because Perl is as old as a T-Rex. Uh, but, <laughs> <you, laughs> uh, but you may... You may it's not as good as Cobus. You, 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 and this is all the things you can consider. And again, through the unfiltered 
no judgment discussion with an LLM, nobody's going to have any sort of um, elitism mm, um, yeah. when it comes to choosing a language. But I think part of that discussion also you need to tell them exactly what are you trying to build, the type yes. of things. Yes. Because, yeah. Yeah, the, exactly. So speaking of, Darko, you, you, uh, you picked a language. You picked Rust um, for whatever reason. You know, we could maybe get into those. Um, Give us a couple more hours on this live stream. Right. We'll get, get I into figured it. not to ask that because I don't want it. We have eight minutes or so. Uh, once you pick that language, right, and once you started building, you know, you, you download the starter app for whatever, you know, web framework you're using yep. in Rust, what does the workflow look like for somebody who's using the uh, the code assistant as a learning tool, and not a just right. generate the code? So, so, so the key part here is start incremental. Do not ask it to make you the world. Incrementally ask questions. What is this? What is that? How do I approach this? How do I approach this specific thing? If you go too broad, it's going to give you an incredibly big answer, which of course you can drill down into, but hey, we're all lazy. We just won't do that. So incrementally going into asking questions, okay, what about this? How do I handle functions? How do I handle this and this and that? Um, with your ultimate goal in mind, whatever you want to build, um, steer it that way. So it's, it's a very important to just... Um, ask a large language model to explain things to you potentially in multiple different ways. Okay. And that's, chunk it up, it's gonna get you faster in this in this wonderful um, um, circle of learning that Massimo has. Circle of life. Circle of life, yes. I see. Uh, and I imagine like you, the way you're prompting the LLM is, is getting, it, it exactly. changes, like as you learn how the answers oh, yeah, are coming yeah. back. Yeah. Do you have some examples of that? I'd like to see. Yes. So let, let's spin this one up, right? Okay. Yes. So I'm going to show you a, a screen of mine, and uh, it's going to feature the best language in the world, um, not Haskell. Um, and um, <laughs> I'm going to show you a couple of ways, like how how developers interact with with code, right? So I have a little application here, and I can say, um, uh, I can say, I don't know, uh, how does the Actix web crate work? This is the this is the framework I'm using here for my for my API, right? And um, I'm going to ask a question, it's, and it's based on this file that's currently open. It's going to give me a couple of things here. It's going to explain, uh, basically explain a little bit, little bit of that code to me, what it does, and how does it do it, right? It's a very broad question. I think this was a horrible prompt. Right. It's like, I just told it, how does X do Y? Yeah. Um, now it did have some sort of uh, uh, some sort of context because this file was open here. So Amazon Q Developer will have a look at your open file, uh, and it's going to be able to do that. But there's way better ways of doing that. So another way you can do this is by using the uh, at workspace feature. At workspace feature tells Amazon Q Developer to hey, look at my whole uh, folder yeah. structure, and based on whatever I have here, um, I don't know, help me. Uh, do whatever or answer my questions right i can tell it uh how can i implement i don't know i'm we're returning vegetables here a function that will return fruit and then it knows my code right now it's fully aware of my what my entire thing here it says oh i see your get vegetables function we're gonna change that to be get fruits and mm. then yeah there you go i like fruits better too yeah of course you know um <laughs> also by the way we have a tomato in the vegetable section but tomato apparently is a fruit Ooh. um so I don't know. Um, so, so you will I think see, we could debate that too. We, so. could, we could potentially debate that. But you see the response here is decent, right? Oh, I can help you with this. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Good. Now, the problem with this is I could use so much more, right? I could have a lot more information here. I could frame my, my prompt in a way better way than just uh, help me implement X. And this is great for getting you move fast, but I'm not lear learning too much here. Yeah. And and as Koba said before, Java, C Sharp, you know, we would do iProduce first, and that would be the interface. Where's the factory? Yeah. We yep. need a factory pattern yep. to uh, implement the concrete versions of these abstract uh, produce items, because right. then we might expand past uh, fruits and vegetables. Who knows, right? We want to leave that open, well, right? Uh, right, so Kobus? Definitely. But uh, do you know that Java is actually just a DSL? It turns XML into stack traces. I don't know these, these these older people talking about Java and these languages. I don't I don't, I don't know what that is. I thought you said you were older. <laughs> no, he's <laughs> older. <laughs> Um, oh no! Oh we, no! We were just discussing this morning. Like, what was the yeah. what was the what was the computer used in high school to learn programming? I used Windows XP and uh, and uh, Visual Studio 2003. He used Windows 3.11. So you know, um, yes. what can I say? <laughs> and that was high school. Oh, high school. Okay. So so I'm gonna show you another example. Let's, let's switch back. back to the screen. Let's switch back to my screen. So I'm gonna mm -hmm. I want to show you an example of of a more um, 
advanced prompt here. Uh, something a little trick you all can use at home. Um, I'm going to pop it here, and it says, explain the problem I'm trying to understand, my current skills relating to it, and structure your response with XML tags. Remember, kids, XML tags are your friends. Use them inside of a prompt because you're going to be able to structure the response of a model no matter what you're doing. So I'm going to tell him, explain the uh, Actix web uh, framework uh, work. Uh, I want to say, and frame. Beautiful thing about the LLMs, you don't have to spell correctly. Um, explain the XML <laughs> web framework and how can I implement the get fruit function. My current skills relating to it, um, I I am, oh, I, come on, Ooh. you can do it. I am, uh, <laughs> I'm, a a I. I'm a .NET 4.0 <laughs> developer uh, with Ooh. 10 years of experience. I feel seen. Oh. I feel um, seen by this. Uh, and then this, if I, if I hit enter on this one, you will see now a couple of things. Um, I gave it what I want, but it's going to, it's going to, it's similar to ASP.NET uh, Web API. I, sure, I guess. Um, it gives me this whole theory about what this thing is. And I can understand, I can relate it to my, this existing skill set. Um, wow, I see Castro, I'm feeling comforted. Oh, where's I, the silver light? <laughs> silver light, wow. Oh. You will be, you will be missed silver light. R.I.P. Um, and then, and then it provides me the example code, right? The, the thing, what I actually want to, what, what I care about. Um, and then ultimately at the end, oh, by the way, here are some common pitfalls, right? In .NET serialization happens automatically. In Rust, you have to define uh, 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 what the, the, these the a serializer and a deserializer. Yeah, what's uh, these the derive 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 macros, whatever. Yes, uh, and ownership and more. So it gives you kind of these things. It's more than just how do I do X. It's but how do I do this specific thing? Here's how I want you to respond, but also here's what I know. Mm -hmm. So it helps you literally move up from from just copy pasting some code. Uh, do not ever do not copy paste your code you can of course but but um, th this brings me to my third point is uh validate and verify right again by by defining how much you know and your skills validate what is this thing that's being produced out here right like i don't know enough about dotnet here to be able to tell you uh, yes it's similar to like an i action result i guess so but like understanding what these <laughs> things is and like and like is this really how you use actix webs or i can just go into into the Actix web um, documentation and say, okay, cool. I can verify some of the things that it gave me and then come back and uh, and maybe correct it. Hey, by the way, it's not how you do this. It's This is the other way. And I just want to say really quick, uh, we have one of our AWS community builders that has created this whole open source project with all these different learnings, with all the prompts, like, and Massimo's even contributed to. I think we're going to drop that in the chat uh, just yeah. so how people can uh, have a, a point of reference. Exactly. And again, keep, keep your prompts saved uh, again oh, yeah helps you a lot and copus did this race thing i'm going to show you i'm going to show you quickly before we wrap up because i know we're kind of kind of close close to the end i'm going to show yeah. you this other example copus did this and and you can do the same in amazon q developer we have a file called secret sauce md it's an instruction file right you can you can use this instruction file to basically tell amazon q developer to answer questions right i can come here and say um uh, let's let's do let's do this. Let's let's do at workspace. Let's see if it's gonna work this time. In secret sauce, and sometimes you have to tell it which file yeah. exactly. In secret sauce, SMD are the uh, are the instructions, uh, and then uh, I want to learn what my main RS file does. Right, it's gonna open up the secret sauce MD file hopefully, and it's gonna oh it, 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 yeah. didn't, it didn't, didn't even do it. So okay, yeah, we're busy trying to figure out exactly what does this, but. What happens is, Doc, I think if you go to the secret source file quickly, I'm um, just so, show it at the top. Uh, there we go. So all the way to, to, to the top. So basically this thought you can see there is, I'm giving it instructions to say, this is how I want you to answer the question. Yeah. There are multiple types of templates depending on the type of question you answer. And I also want you to include the following things. And here's my background. So yeah. how yeah. to frame yeah. it, relate to things. Yeah. Because I think that's been the fun discussions we've been having with Rust. Because yeah. I don't know Rust at all, um, but I know um, C Sharp, Job, and a bunch of other languages. And then we have a discussion, and Jocko describes what he wants. And I'm like, well, that concept should exist in Rust. Exactly. What does it exactly. look like? Exactly. Unfortunately, we yeah. are out of time for this segment, though. So it is a uh, exercise for the chat to go out and start learning alongside yes. Yes. Uh, Amazon Q Developer. But thank you both for joining us. Thank you so much, Thanks. folks. You stay chat. here. Bye. Yep.